Let me start with what he said earlier on the WHO, that he's looking into ending funding to the WHO. Not that he's going to do it, Adam, but he's looking into it. How does that bode for international coordination, whether it's public health or the economy and monetary policy? And how important is this in order to navigate the pandemic? It's obviously a very bad idea. This president, for whatever decisions he makes, has two habits that aren't illustrated by this threat on the WTO, WHO. Excuse me. First, that he tends to fire truth tellers, whether they be organizations or or individuals. He likes a scapegoat, especially if they're not part of his immediate organization. And second, he likes to threaten organizations and assume that. You know, it's all about winning this particular game, this particular round, which tends to backfire when you're in a repeated game. Um, anyway, so I, I think it's it's harmful. Uh, public health cooperation is probably the single most useful kind of cooperation we can have internationally, especially now. Adam, what do you make of the president's stimulus package so far? He's saying that he's going to ask for an additional $250 billion for relief loans to Congress. How important is that this money is dispersed properly and efficiently? I think we have to give credit to the president, to the administration, particularly to Treasury Secretary Mnuchin, uh, for working extremely well with both parties in Congress and writing a stimulus package that it has the right intent, which is to make it feasible as much as possible for people home during lockdown and not starve, to make it so that as many small businesses as possible can get financing and get through the crisis, that this is essentially a bridge loan for vast parts of the economy and state and local government as well, um, because this is nobody's fault, and this is a complete disruption, and we have to try to bridge people until the economy, for health reasons, is in a place to reopen. I think additional money for small business is probably one of the better things you could do if you're going to add on to the package. And again, I want to say I, I, it's a congressional administration joint effort that I would give a, a, a B plus or an A minus to. It was the right scale. It was largely the right intent. The amount of waste was cut down. The amount of oversight was put up a bit, although the president is trying to cut that now. Um, so it was generally the right thing. Adding to it, I think it would be more important in human terms to go for support for the state governments, for SNAP, for Medicare, Medicaid, for their budgets, than even small business right now, because that's the big human need. And the issue with small business is the inability, and I'm not blaming anyone. This, is, I, this isn't me bashing SBA like he, like he bashes WHO. This is just, it is incredibly difficult for the SBA and the Fed to scale, and the Treasury to scale up hundreds fold their loan giving from what they always did at the SBA, Small Business Administration. So, you know, but once the few weeks are gone, the small business is not the main issue. I wish we weren't wasting money on the airlines and other big businesses that have assets and access to finance. But human needs and state and local government financing, I think, would be the best place to add money right now. Adam, how difficult Hello? is it to determine economically what the right thing is to do in terms of this being such a you know, fairly unprecedented, exogenous shock to the global economy? Is there a risk that, for example, the demand stimulus that we see will actually result in a stagflationary environment on the other end of this? Uh, there is a risk in the sense that there's a risk that possibly the sun won't come up in the morning tomorrow. But it's it, in the sense that we can never prove anything absolutely certainly, but it's an exceedingly small risk. Um, no, I think the message to take is that even though this is an unprecedented shock, this is a shock where 95 percent of all economists from both left and right have largely agreed on the diagnosis and the response. I mean, whether it's Ken Rogoff and Glenn Hubbard in the right on the U.S., Larry Summers and, and Jason Furman on the left in the U.S. You can talk about this in other countries as well. We've all come together and said basically the same thing. You're not going to overdo it. Don't worry about overdoing it. Whatever you think is, is enough is probably not going to be enough. Worry about the bill later and try to get it out as quickly as possible to the small business sector, mostly to keeping unemployed people 
tied to their jobs and at least able to pay their bills and to bridge loan, as I said, everything. So, no, this is a place where I think the economic prescription is pretty straightforward. Similarly, there was all this gibberish about, you know, are we trading off too much by doing a lockdown? As many people have said, mm. and rightly, you just you, all you're going to do is sacrifice more if you pull up the lockdown prematurely.